This is our chapter 7 outline, uh, what is a sampling distribution? Uh, we're focusing on that and I want you to think about the difference between a sampling distribution and a population distribution and the characteristics of each that define them, uh, including and the number of observations or sample size, parameter, statistic, and the word distribution. So keep in mind P is for parameter and for population. So a parameter comes from the population. Ultimately with statistics, that's what we're trying to figure out, the parameter. We're trying to just figure out something about the population. Um, and we call that the parameter, whether it's the percent of people who um, approve of Barack Obama, whether it's the percent of people who prefer Thai food to Mexican food. Whatever we're looking for in our study, we're trying to figure out our parameter, and then we use a statistic from our sample to figure it out. Since we can't poll the whole country about their opinion, since we can't figure out everything from the population, we have discussed uh, quality ways, ways of assuring that we get a statistic from our sample that's representative of the population. So S for statistic, S for sample. So our statistic, when we talk about it, comes from the sample. And if we take an SRS, if we use a uh, random assignment, if it's an experiment, um, all of those different strategies, a good sample size, um, those are all ways we can assure that our statistic from our sample gives us a good estimate of our parameter from the population. So let's talk about our population distribution first. Uh, that describes the actual values of people from the population. So a graph of all the values of the parameter of what we're trying to figure out. Our sampling distribution will describe all values of the statistic and all possible samples of the same size from the same population. So if we took a, a sample of voters and we took a sample of 500, the sampling distribution would represent all possible combinations of 500 taken from the um, taken from the population. So it'd be uh, if we had 10 million in our population, it would be all the different combinations of 500 that could result from that. So if we're taking a proportion, it would be the percent of our sample in each of those samples of 500 that uh, approved of Barack Obama, or the percent that uh, preferred Thai food to Mexican food. If we're looking at uh, working for a restaurant chain or something, and we're trying to figure out what type of restaurant they should open. So we would look at that, and we would want to see, um, so it's the ways that 500, all the different possible samples of 500 that you could take from that 10 million from the population. So we can approximate this with an, enough SRSs from the population. Keep in mind that most of what we're going to be actually dealing with is approximation of the sampling distribution, because you can't come up with all possible combinations of 500. Uh, so let's say maybe people did um, 20 SRSs of 500 to get an approximation of the sampling distribution. Um, don't confuse a sampling distribution with a distribution of sample data. So a distribution of sample data is one sample um, and the values of that sample. A sampling distribution is all the different ways you could sample with the same size n from the population distribution. So keep that in mind. When we're talking about the sampling distribution, we're talking about every possible combination with the same size n, uh, same size SRS pulled from it. Distribution of sample data, we're talking about one sample. This sampling distribution, all the possible samples. So that brings us to biased and unbiased estimator. An unbiased estimator or parameter has a center uh, that's equal to the center of the population distribution. That's our goal, is to create unbiased estimators so our samples give us information that tells us what our true parameter is. So we can really find out uh, whatever it is we're trying uh, to discover, whether it's the percent of people who um, lower their blood pressure when taking a certain new medication. Um, if we get an unbiased estimator, then that's telling us that uh, we, we have a strong uh, strategy for sampling, strong strategy for taking everything all the way through in order to determine that our value is uh, truly the value of the population, whatever we're getting. Uh, a biased estimator of a parameter does not have the same center of the sampling distribution as the population distribution. So it would be off somehow. So we can compare different estimators to find out which is more biased and which is less biased. Uh, here's how we take standard deviation of a sampling distribution uh, based on P the proportion, the proportion being between 0 and 1. So uh, the proportion times 1 minus the proportion over the sample size and take the square root of that. And that's how we find the standard deviation. Now when you see the p hats, that means we're talking about a sample. We're talking about our sample proportion when you see a little p hat, the p with the triangular hat. x bar is our actual 
Um, so this p hat, one sample, x bar would be our actual parameter. So the standard deviation of our parameter would be given by the standard deviation that we figured out here divided by the square root of the sample size. So when we try to estimate a parameter, we want to choose a statistic with lower no bias to minimize the amount of variability, is the idea. So before going on, take a look over the Chapter 7 Lesson 1 material in the book. Uh, look over some of the examples of there, especially if you're confused by anything we j I just discussed, um, to get a better idea of what we're talking about with the sampling distribution um, and the population distribution. The words parameter and statistic, parameter from the population, both start with P, statistic from our sample. Uh, now we're going to go on to 7-2 material with sample proportions. So P hat, which we were just talking about, refers to the proportion of successes in the sample. So it's a proportion, remember that means between 0 and 1. The sampling distribution of p hat describes how the statistic varies in all possible samples from the population. So it would be all the different proportions that you'd get from your sample of the same size. So remember, you'd have to specify the size, like all the samples of 50, where n is 50. So it'd be all the combinations that, that you could get if you were taking an SRS of 50. And so you can just think about all the different ways you could get 50 people from a group of 500, let's say, and figure out that there's a number of different p hats or proportions of people that would, if we were talking about the about a certain drug lowering, blood, lowering, lowering blood pressure, the percent of people that had a lower blood pressure as a result in each sample that we pulled. And our sampling distribution would represent every possible sample. The mean of the sampling distribution is equal to the population proportion p. So we're saying it's an unbiased estimator, so p hat would equal p, the true parameter. Um, in our sampling distribution. Standard deviation of the sampling distribution is given by this formula again, which we just saw. Um, we can only use this formula if less than 10% of the population is sampled. So small n represents our sample, big N represents our population. We can only sample less than 10% of the population. So if we had a population of 5,000 and we sampled 501, then we can't use these formulas anymore. As soon as we get above 10%, um, then we can't use these formulas uh, to determine standard deviation and um, other things like that. So that's our 10% condition. You always want to check to make sure that less than 10% of the population is sampled. Notice that n is in our denominator. So as our sample size gets larger, the standard deviation gets smaller. Uh, so larger samples tend to be preferable as they have less standard deviation. Um, and But keep in mind that it's the square root. So you have to have four times the sample size to uh, cut the standard deviation in half because you're taking the square root of this value here. So when the sample size uh, n is large, the sampling distribution is close to a normal distribution um, with p and standard deviation of this. So because uh, we have an actual parameter, all of our samples are going to tend to fall around that parameter. So just by chance, when we uh, take a mean of 500 people, um, more often than not, the mean is going to be at or very close to the true mean of the parameter. So what this is saying is like uh, that we're very rarely going to have much data that's far over in the right and left tail of our normal distribution. So if we have a parameter and we have a large sample size, we're going to get uh, close to a normal distribution, uh, and we would call a normal approximation. So we we would have an approximately normal curve. Uh, and we can do that when both the sample size times our proportion is greater than or equal to 10, and our sample size times 1 minus our proportion is greater than or equal to 10. So th this is something else that has to be satisfied um, for the normal approximation. So again, if our proportion was 25%, and we had... If our proportion was 25%, we would have to have at least a sample size of 40 in order for this to be satisfied. Uh, so this is also a useful tool in figuring out how large of a sample size we need in order to apply these formulas. So take home ideas about, about sampling distributions. Um, a sampling distribution is what we usually end up with when we take an SRS. We're trying to use our statistic from, the, from our sample in order to apply it to our 
the parameter from the population. The parameter represents the actual value that we're searching for. The statistic represents from the sample. A sampling distribution is all the possible combinations of all the SRSs of the same size. So it's like if we took every possible sample of 500, what would it look like? And each each point would represent the parameter, the um, the mean of each of those samples. So um, sampling distribution would be all the possible combinations of the same size sampled from that uh, population. And then our formulas that we can use for standard deviation, keep in mind the 10% condition, sample has to be less than 10% of the population, and then the condition down here for normal approximation where the sample size times the proportion has to be greater than or equal to 10, and then the sample size times 1 minus the proportion has to be greater than or equal to 10. Um, let's take a look at our multiple choice. So here you have your multiple choice saying uh, that President Obama's approval rating was at 57% according to an Associated Press GFK, according to uh, the samples that they took. They used an SRS of the population to pull 10,000 people. Uh, if President Obama's appro actual approval rating was 55% of the entire nation, then I want you to tell me what the parameter is in those numbers, what the statistic is, uh, and then if the 10% condition is satisfied, uh, and then these four are all the possible options of those, and E would represent none of the above, if you think that neither A, nor B, nor C, nor D is true. Um, so keep in mind the 10% condition. We have 10,000 people sampled here. Think about how many people are in the U.S. and what the 10% condition would need to be to be satisfied. Think about what the parameter is, and is that from the population or the sample? And the statistic is, is that from the population or the sample? Uh, fill it out on the Google form below and any questions you might have. Uh, and then take a look at the conceptual question which asks, which asks about sampling distribution versus a population distribution.